ELA Daily Rundown, Thursday, June 4th, 2020. Today, in reading, we're not going to do our usual read aloud of the story here, so we're going to skip that. We are going to skip the meaning of these specific words. Today, we're going to do the Read Henry's Train Set and answer the questions. That'll be right here on screen for you to follow along. It's a quick story, and it's got a number of comprehension questions after it. Uh, just getting them to, to kind of remember the story that they hear and be able to critically think about it. In writing, Daily Fix It 1 through 5, you should only do two. That'll be your writing portfolio assignment. Foundational skills. Right on screen, we're going to do some practice with diphthongs OU and OW. We're going to practice imperative sentences. And at the end, we're going to have you read the decodable reader story, Chow should be on their level and they should be able to at least try to attempt to read most of it. So everything else we're just going to skip today. It's a lot of work there. We're going to take out a good chunk of it and make it more uh, reasonable. Let's get started. So what we have here today is a little different than our usual read-alouds. I know normally you'll see a story, you'll see the pictures from the book, and I'll just read it to you. Uh, today, this is something we've been skipping a lot in the new packet, and I wanted to give it a try today. This is called a Fresh Reads. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to read this first part to you, then I'm going to scroll down and show you what the questions are. I'll read the questions out to you, but you're going to have to answer them. They can be answered on a separate sheet of paper. And this will be your reading portfolio assignment for today. Let's get started. Henry's train set. Henry had a train set with bright red train cars. The cars ran on a set of black train tracks. Henry set up the train in his room. He laid the tracks in the shape of an egg. The train tracks went under hills and ran by creeks. Henry had fun running his train around the tracks. Henry had a little sister named Mary. She asked to play with the train. You are too small to know how to run the train, said Henry. Mary said, you just don't want to share. Henry said, you are right. I am sorry. We can play with the train together. So let's scroll on down and take a look at the questions. These are going to be the questions I need you to answer. Number one, what happens at the beginning of the story? You'll see you'll have three choices. Is it Henry sets up the train set in his room? And remember, you're going to do this on a separate sheet of paper. So I would accept one, and the first one could be A, the second choice can be B, and the third choice can be C. So you don't have to sit there and rewrite the whole sentence, or mom or dad doesn't have to sit there and rewrite the whole sentence. You point to the one they think that you think is the right answer, and mom and dad will either write an A, B, or a C next to whatever number question you're doing. So what happens at the beginning of the story? Is it A, Henry sets up his train set in his room? Is it B, Mary wants to play with the train? Or is it C, Henry asks Mary to play with him? This is a question that's looking to make sure you can recall facts from the story we just read. Number two. How do you think Mary feels at the end of the story? Is it A, too little to play with trains? Is it B, happy that she spoke? Or is it C, afraid of Henry? This is helping you to remember what the conflict of the story was and the resolution here at the end. Number three, where does the story take place? Is it A, in the yard? Is it B, at Mary's school? Or is it C, in Henry's room? This is a type of question that's asking you to remember the setting of the story. Where did most of the story, or the whole story in this case, take place? Every story happened somewhere. You have to remember where it happened. Number four, what happens at the end of the story? Is it A, Henry tells Mary to go away? Is it B, Henry asks Mary to play? To play? Or is it C? Henry sets up the train tracks. This is another type of question that's asking you to recall facts from the story and know what happens in a story at the beginning part, the middle part, and the end part. And number five, 
What is the big idea of the story? What is this story mostly about? What's the main idea of this story? Remember your answers we put on a separate piece of paper and submitted for your class dojo assignment today in reading portfolio. The Daily Fix-It. All right, what we have in front of us here is numbers one through five. You are only going to choose two. That's right, only two for your writing portfolio assignment today in Class Dojo. When you look at these sentences, remember you are going to look for things that are incorrect, whether it be improper spelling, improper punctuation, or improper use of capital letters. So be a good detective find the missing items and correctly rewrite the sentence on a separate piece of paper to be handed into class dojo for your writing assignment today <music> diphthongs it's just a fun word to say you try it say diphthongs <laughs> We're going to look at the diphthongs of OU and OW. That's a uh, combination of vowels, usually in the middle of a word, to make, it, make you say the right sound when you try to read that word. Well, let's take a look. Pick a word from the box to match each picture. Write it on the line. All right, number one. What is that? Is that a clown? No. Is that a flower? No. Is that a house? That's right, this is a house. H, wait, no, that's not a house. Is that a cloud? That's a cloud. C L O U D, cloud. Number two, that definitely looks like a house. What? It's not a house? It's a, it's a what now? A flower. F L O W E R, flower. Number three has got to be a clown. What? That, oh, number three is a house. Ah, okay. H-O-U-S-E, house. Got the O-U sound. Ow, ow, ow. The diphthong. Ow, ow, ow. You hear that? It's not just one vowel. It's ow, 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 ow. House. I don't say hose. I don't say who's. I say house. Almost makes you say ow. Ow. Ow! Number four. That is definitely a flower. What? What? Oh, it's a clown! Ow! Ow! Cl, cl, ow, ow! N, n, clown! C, L, O, W, N. Unscramble the letters to make the word U, O, D, L. That's a tough one. We're going to make the O-U, so we know in the middle now it's going to be O-U for that ow, ow, ow sound. Is it dowel? No, no, no it's, that's not how you spell dowel. Is it loud? L-O-U-D. Yes, in D, D. W-T-N-O. Well, we know the O and the W go in the middle, right? Because those are our diphthongs in the middle, our two, uh, our two letters in the middle to make the sound, ow sound for us. O, W. If I put a T here and an N here, I have T, O, W, N. And that spells town, town, ow, 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 ow. O-U-T, I mean T-U-O, which is O-U-T backwards, O-U-T, out. Pick a word to finish each sentence, write it on the line. The opposite of in is out, O-U-T. The radio was too loud, L-O-U-D. I like to shop in town, T-O-W-N. All right, fantastic job, everyone. Imperative sentences, let's see what that is. An imperative sentence is a command sentence that tells someone to do something 
It begins with a capital letter, and this one ends with a period. Here's an example. Go to the garden. That's telling you to go somewhere. That is an imperative sentence. It ends in a period. Starts with a capital letter. Please watch the dog. It's telling you, well, it's asking you nicely to do something. Ends in a period. Starts with a capital P. Underline each sentence that is a command. Number one, are you thirsty? Is that a command? No, it is not. What is your first clue to tell you that that is not a command? I'm going to point to it. Look, look, look. That is a question mark, not a period. Imperative sentences end in a period. This is not an appended, imperative sentence. We are not underlining it. Number two, pour a glass of milk. Ends in a period. First clue, telling you to do something. Second clue, that's right. We need to underline sentence number two. Number three, you spilled some milk. Well, that does end in a period, but. That does in an end in a period, but. It's not telling you to do something. It's simply stating that you have already done something. That is not an imperative sentence. We are not underlining number three. Number four, please wipe up the milk. Aha, period at the end. And it's telling you to do something. That is an imperative sentence. Number five, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me do something to help you. Not you do something. It's not telling you to do something. That is not an imperative sentence. We are not underlining it. Number six, drink your milk. I'm telling you to do something. Drink your milk milk it ends in a period it's telling you to do something it's an imperative sentence give it an underline 